So we have it coming soon. Yes. Well, it's coming soon, really. Uh, so this is something that we worked on like a year ago, and uh, we kind of got delayed and distracted. You, and you can you can tell the world when, happened. when we took this photo because Bitcoin was uh, 10, 10, 10K. ten thousand US. Um, but we actually are uh, back on the IMX train. Uh, we took a little bit of a detour uh, to do some other things, including uh, keeping our company running during 2020, uh, but we're finally able to get back to some uh, delayed projects, including this one. Uh, so it's our first uh, Cortex M7 board. It's going to be the IMX RT1011, which is a 500 megahertz Cortex M7 from NXP. Um, it's got 128K of RAM. It's going to have a four megabyte QSPY flash chip. Um, we have CircuitPython already working for this chip and we're sort of you know, going through a bug fixing stage. We're also um, gonna give it a second stage bootloader. Uh, so we've been working on uh, getting Teeny UF2 all ported over and working quite well for um, the uh, IMX series. Um, this will be the first board of a many IMX series uh, chip breakouts and feathers and, and metros and Pi portals and whatnot. Um, we thought this chip was cool because it's like, it's a hand solderable 500 megahertz processor. It's just kind of neat. Um, and uh, it is very fast with CircuitPython. It doesn't have a ton of RAM, but it, it, it does have enough to be able to do uh, Wi-Fi projects and, and control a display and, and get sensor data. So we'll be our fastest megahertz um, metro so far. Yep. Very exciting. Next up. Okay, we've got some more Raspberry Pi compute modules. Uh, this one, I mean, every day we're kind of getting more modules in. Let me verify the two stats for these. So these are... I'm going to show both. Yeah, because one has flash. This one does not have flash memory. So the one without flash memory is the uh, two gigabytes of RAM, but it does have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So this is the light version. So you'll need an external SD card um, with the compute module. Um, but if you do that, uh, you've got two gigabytes of RAM. You've got Wi-Fi and uh, Bluetooth on board. And this one, you can see the flash chip kind of in the top center there. It's got uh, eight gigabytes of MMC flash memory two gigabytes of RAM, and of course, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Uh, so this is, you know, if you grab our compute module I.O. board, plug this in, and um, again, if you don't have the MMC memory, you're gonna have to plug in an SD card. If you do have the MMC, what's nice is it, it's got this super ha uh, fast, um, high-speed, large memory chip right on board. Um, so a lot of people prefer that to having an SD card. Okay, next up, we have a lot of cables. We have a lot of cables. Uh, it's a cable series. These are 1.25 millimeter pitch Cables, they're compatible with Molex Pico Blade. They're sometimes called like Pico Blades, but they're not necessarily um, Molex. They are just 1.25 millimeter pitch cables. Um, they are 1, 2N, and I can show on the overhead what that means because there's two, there's two kinds of cables. So let's, uh, let's go to the overhead and I'll show. So all the cables are pretty much this, you know, they're, they're just different number of pins. So let me just make sure that we uh, lock onto the focus. So um, you'll see that they have, uh, you know, the contacts, they're crimped in and all that good stuff. Um, so for this cable, oh, sorry, this one, this one is one to one. Um, made a mistake. Um, so you can see that um, the, the colors may not be the exact same one as uh, your cable, um, but for this one, it is, this one, um, pin one is uh, the black wire, and this one is, pin one is also the black wire. So just make sure that when you have your boards that are connecting back and forth, sometimes like the black wire on one, is on one here and is on like, you know, the nth pin over here. So just like keep, in, keep that in mind when you're designing it. Um, we've seen some cables are, they're called one-to-one -one and some are one-to-n. Um, so this one, you know, it's, it's the same on both sides. Um, but that's not always true. I just want to warn people because we might also carry the cables that have it the other way around. That said, we have them in multiple different pins. We have 7 pin, 8 pin, 9 pin, 10 pin, basically 4 through 10. Um, they're pre-assembled cables. They're really nice. Uh, they're 20 centimeters long. So uh, if you're um, just, you want to connect data and power from one board to the other, uh, you don't want to use a flex cable. You want uh, a fine pitch or a fairly fine pitch cable. Um, we do like Pico blades. We use them a lot. They're very compact. You get a lot of pins um, without a big connector, so they're not very bulky. All right. Next up. Next up, we have Stemic Utified 
Uh, the HTU uh, 21D breakout. This is a humidity and temperature sensor from TE. We like it. It's a nice sensor. It's got a PTFE filter, also quite nice. Um, we've had this one for quite a bit, and uh, it's a popular sensor. So we decided we would Stemma QTify it. It now comes with uh, plug and play Stemma QT connectors on the side. Uh, we're trying to get all of our boards into the same form factor, same pin order, uh, same connector. Um, to make it easier for people to um, do no soldering sensor connectivity. So the HU21D had gotten the QT glow up, as we like to say. All right, next up. Okay, well now we're on to new products uh, from the fabrication department. So um, we've got this board. Let me grab the demo. So these are uh, mechanical key breakouts. So I'm kind of getting interested in mechanical key parts. And to use them, you know, the mechanical keys themselves, uh, they're often called like Cherry MX or Cherry MX compatibles. Um, and they, normally you need to solder them into like a, a keyboard and, you know, then you, you clicky and clacky them. This breakout lets you plug in a Cherry MX compatible switch. Like you see here, this is a, a Kale box switch, which is Cherry MX compatible. You plug it in to um, the breakout board and there's on the bottom, you can see on this photo, there's a socket. And so the switch doesn't get soldered in. It actually kind of press fit plugs in. Uh, it can be removed. So if you want it to be more permanent, you know, use glue or something or, or some uh, epoxy to keep it in place. Um, there is also on the bottom, you see that white square thing that's a NeoPixel. And there's also a diode. And the diode is what lets you create uh, key matrices with this thing. And the NeoPixel, um, you see here, there's this kind of like, you know, there's the, the two sockets on the left. The center is the, the mounting post. On the right, there's actually a little slot in the keys. And the key um, itself is meant for like having an LED soldered in perhaps. But you can also just have a reverse mount NeoPixel shine through. Um, and then you can kind of backlit the LED with RGB colors. Um, one thing to just be aware of, it's not in the center. You know, it's the bottom half of the key or the top half. It's one half the key that gets RGB lit. Um, here I've got some translucent keys, so you can sort of see that it's not the full body of the key. It's not like, you know, whole thing glowing. It's just one half of it. So let's go to the overhead and I'll show you the demo because it's actually easier to show. So here we've got a Stemma QT, sorry, a QT Pi board. Uh, you know, it's just using Arduino or you can use CircuitPython, whatever. And um, these are the keys and I'm just going to remove them to show you that um, the key itself plugs into the socket. So this is the key. And it's got these two um, connectors and that those, when this key is pressed, those connect together. And then there's the mounting post, right, to keep it mechanically stable. So you can plug it in and then, you know, it, it's pretty stable. I would say, look, you want to have it glued or taped or something to, to keep it from coming apart because you can pull it off. Um, and here's another one. So you have two of them connected together. And then on each side, you have multiple pinouts. Um, there's power and ground here. These are for the NeoPixel. And then this white wire you see, you know, goes in here and then chains over to this one. That's the NeoPixel data line. So just like NeoPixels, you chain them together. This has NeoPixel data going through. And then um, you have two pins for the switch, the top and the bottom, the end and the cathode of the switch. Again, there's a, this diode in the middle so you can make key matrices. If you're not doing key matrices, you can just ignore that diode. It's there to, to avoid key ghosting if you're making a complicated matrix. But um, basically, you have one pin for every switch. And then uh, for this demo, I will reassemble it very quickly. When you press the key, the LED turns off. So, you know, you can just use it as a switch and then control the NeoPixel separately. So there, you know, the NeoPixel is not connected to the switch at all. They're totally separate. You can have the NeoPixel on all the time, off all the time. You don't even have to power it if you don't want to. It's just kind of a bonus extra. It shines underneath. Here's a demo of the opposite. When you press the button, the NeoPixel shines through. Um, so it's basically a breadboard friendly way of connecting a mechanical key that is Cherry MX compatible to your breadboard. It will do more stuff with these keys, but I wanted to just get started um, and have an easy way to make breadboard friendly mechanical key switch projects. Okay, and star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady, our customers, our community, and our team, is Neo Trinky. Neo Trinky, your best friend, who's Neo Pixels, and it's a trinket, and it's a USB key. Uh, it's Neo Trinky. Uh, I don't know. It's from Bandai. No, it's not. It's from Adafruit. It's uh, a USB key, 
And uh, as you as you might expect, it's it's got the USB connectors here, so you plug into USB. It's got a SAMD21, it's our favorite little microcontroller chip, so it can run CircuitPython. In fact, this demo is CircuitPython. It's got a regulator just to get you that three volts you need. It uh, doesn't need a lot of components. There's a reset button, and then there's four NeoPixels and uh, two capacitive touchpads. So, um, you know, these contacts here at the end of the body, if we zoom in, you can see that there's, there's a split in the middle, left and right. So um, when I plug this into USB, so I get a little USB extender, when I press one, it gets bright, and when I press the other, wait, hold on. Sorry, this one gets dim, and this one gets bright, so I can dim, dim them, brighten them. So they act as two separate uh, inputs, uh, the capacitive inputs. You can control the NeoPixel separately, you know, so I just have them doing this kind of a rainbow glow thing. And then of course you can get into a bootloader, you can load Arduino code, you can use CircuitPython. It's very small and simple. We just wanted to make like a keychain CircuitPython board. Um, it has a little slot here that you can put onto a keychain key ring if you'd like. And then you just plug it in and you can immediately start coding. And again, you don't need an IDE or anything. You, you can just go straight into CircuitPython um, and write code for it. So it's very cute. And it's got an extra thick PCB, so it uh, plugs into USB quite nicely. Um, so Trinky, Neo Trinky, why not? Neo Trinky, Neo Neo 